Are you baffled by stoichiometry? I'm Leah Fish from LeahFirstSci.com, where you can find hundreds of study tips and tutorial videos. I also offer private online tutoring for chemistry as well as orgo, bio, and physics. And in this video, I will teach you a simple method for stoichiometry and balancing complex equations. Stoichiometry is not only a difficult word to pronounce, but the topic can be somewhat complex. I want to show you a simple way to work out balancing reactions, no matter how it's presented or how complex it looks. Stoichiometry comes from two words, which means elements and balancing. And the idea here is founded on the principles of the law of conservation of matter, which says that matter cannot be created or destroyed only transferred. This means that I cannot destroy an atom or make atoms appear or disappear. However, if I'm starting with an atom in one molecule, I can change the nature of that atom and put it into a different form or a different molecule. Let's put this into practice with a simple reaction. Let's say I have molecule A reacting with B to form compound C. Just a quick background, anything that shows up before the arrow, these are your reactants these are the molecules that react. And anything that shows up after the arrow, this is your product, and this is what comes out of the chemical reaction. This is the yield arrow, which shows that a reaction is happening in one direction. Now we have A and B go, so see, we don't know what molecules they are, but whatever atoms are there in A and B must still be there in C, so that if we count up the atoms, the net change will be zero. Let's see this in a simple reaction that happens when we combine hydrogen gas with gas. oxygen gas to form water. Notice that the type of atoms that I have are the same, but the numbers that I have are different. The subscript after the number tells you how many of that atom are combined within that number, and if I place a number in the beginning, this is called the coefficient, and this tells me how many of the molecule. So let's quickly count up what we have. In the first molecule, we have two hydrogen atoms, the second molecule gives me two oxygen atoms, but in the product I only have two hydrogen and one oxygen. That means I have one oxygen missing. To balance the second oxygen going into the reaction, I place a number two as the coefficient, and this tells me that I have two of my H2O or water molecules. If I count the atoms up again, I do have my two oxygens that I see in the reactants. However, because I have a coefficient and a subscript of two, hydrogen will actually be two times two, and that means I have four. To balance this on the left side of the equation, I place a two in front of the H2. Once again, I have two times two gives me four, and let's do a quick count. I have two times two, four hydrogens on the left. I have four hydrogens on the right. I have one molecule of oxygen that gives me two oxygens on the left. Two molecules of water, each containing one oxygen, gives me two oxygens on the right. A quick thing to recognize is that there is no number written in front of the oxygen. It's what I call the invisible or the self-understood one. And what this says is you have one O2, but you don't have to include that number. Because this was a simple reaction, I was able to just look at the atoms, look at the molecules, and place numbers in front of them. However, sometimes you're going to see a more complex reaction where you might find yourself going back and forth from the right and left, adding numbers and confusing yourself. So I want to show you a different way. Now, a word of caution about this method. At first, it looks like it takes a few extra seconds, but if you can waste a few extra seconds to know that you're doing it right and therefore not have to do the problem again, it's worth it, and in the long run, you will find yourself saving time on your exam. And the reaction we'll look at is the combustion of methane. Methane, written as CH4, will react with O2 gas in the presence of heat. We can include a triangle for heat, but oftentimes that'll be excluded. And the products of a combustion reaction are carbon dioxide, which is CO2 gas, and H2O. If I try balancing this reaction the way I did the other one, I'll find myself going back and forth with the numbers. For example, I have carbon here, I have carbon here, I have four hydrogen, so I have to place a two here, but now my oxygen number changes, oxygen number changes. Instead, here's what I'm going to do. I'll create a quick checklist of all the atoms that I have and make sure that the numbers on the checklist are balanced to let me know when the reaction is balanced. Some people prefer to write the atoms down on each side. I prefer to write them down the middle. This way they serve two purposes. 
One, they serve as a divider between my reactants and products, and two, I can easily see the numbers lined up side by side. I'll start by writing what I see. CH4 gives me one carbon on the left, CO2 gives me a carbon on the right. CH4 gives me four hydrogens on the left, and H2O gives me two hydrogens on the right. I have two oxygens on the left in O2. Here's where you have to be careful. In the products, I have oxygen showing up in two molecules. I have it in the carbon dioxide for a total of two, and water is one for a total of three. Looking at these numbers, carbon appears to be balanced, but hydrogen and oxygen are not. Instead of erasing the number and replacing it with something else, I prefer to make a line, just cross it out, and write the other number there for two reasons. One, I can go back and check my work, and two, it's going to get really messy if you're constantly erasing. So let's see what we have to balance. Hydrogen is four on the left and two on the right. To make hydrogen four on the right, I have to place a two in front of the H2O. This allows me to update the hydrogen number. I have two times two for a total of four. However, the oxygen number also changes. I now have two oxygens in water, two in carbon dioxide for a total of four on the right. I have two on the left. Since oxygen shows up as an O2 molecule, I simply place a two in front of the molecule. That gives me two times two for a total of four. Cancel that out and I have four. Now let's compare the values. Carbon is one on both sides, hydrogen is four on both sides, and oxygen is four on both sides. If the numbers on my checklist add up, I know that my reaction is properly balanced, and this gives me a final answer of CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 plus 2H2O. In the next video, I will show you how to balance complex combustion equations. So what do you think? Do you feel confident enough to conquer these chemistry topics on your own? Thing is, this short video was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to understand in chemistry which cannot be taught in just 5 to 10 minutes. But luckily, I have prepared an exclusive video training that I am offering as a free gift to you. Trust me, if you're serious about chemistry, you can't miss this one. To claim your free gift, visit layerforsci.com slash chemistry gift. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive email updates, including information regarding new videos, study tips, resources, and more. The URL again, layerforsci.com slash chemistry gift, all one word. A quick favor, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you know anyone else struggling with this information, share it with them too. They'll thank you for it. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you liked most about this video and, of course, if you have any questions. You can also say hi on Facebook by visiting me at facebook.com slash Versailles. Psst, still here. Don't forget to subscribe.